I really love glide thread. This is the glide 40 weight thread. Very, very pretty. And I needed something that you were going to be able to see really well. I also am going to use glide in the 60 weight. All right, brand new cone here. Let me turn it so you can see the label. The reason that I'm going to use two threads is I have two different needs. The 60 weight thread is a much smaller diameter than the 40 weight thread. You can even see that when I hold it up. The 60 weight thread isn't going to talk as loud as the 40 weight thread, but it will still be visible on the video. Look at the difference. It's very obvious, isn't it? Let's look up on the IntelliCulture screen. You can see that I have a block with a border around it. And when you look down below, you can see where I have stitched out the same. And I'm using the bolder 40 weight thread for this so that we'll be able to see it. Now actually stitching on flat fabric with just stitching with the thread, it's a little bit tougher because you don't have a ditch to travel in. So let me share with you my thoughts on stitching the ditch. The block that I'm going to put cross hatching in, if it were on a real quilt like Lindsay's quilt that we saw earlier, I definitely stitch in the ditch. That stabilizes the block. It also gives me a place to travel when I bump into that seam. So that's the perfect way to start out. You're going to stitch in the ditch the block that you want to cross hatch. Yes, it's extra work, but it's worth it. So right now we're looking at the 40 weight thread on the blue fabric for visibility. I turned off the front LED lights on my APQS Freddy because the glare was too much. We wouldn't be able to see. So next I'm going to change over to the 60 weight thread and I'm getting ready to stitch out the cross hatching. I'd like to add when I am stitching in the ditch, I like to use a strong, smaller diameter thread. I like Superior's bottom line and I use that probably the most often. And I also like to use the uh, 60 weight glide. So I know this looks familiar from the previous video. I went ahead and set this up for the block that we're doing on the blue fabric. Here I am at the clipping confirmation screen. So I am going to think about this now. This is asking me how I want to handle the transitions. Right now, it says continuous. That means that IntelliQuilter will stitch along the edge if we choose continuous. I don't want to choose continuous. I'm going to go up to the ribbon and touch the plus sign. It turns to jump stitch. I don't want jump stitch at this point. I want to choose tie off and I'm going to say accept. You will not be able to change this later. Do you want to commit? Yes, I do. The blue lines that you see on the screen represent the way that the machine would travel after you stop to tie off. I'm going to look at this add edit block screen. There isn't anything I need to do there, so I'm going to say finished. I'm ready to modify the pattern. I want to split the pattern. I'm going to split the pattern every place that you see a blue line. Here, I'm going to split. Here, now it'll only let me do one at a time, so I'm going to choose each blue line and travel. Split, blue line, split, blue line, split. You get the idea. Now all of the blue lines have been split and all we have now are starts and ends. So I'm going to say finished. And I'm going to need to sequence these so that IntelliQuilter will stitch them out. So I'm at the sew quilt, design sew quilt screen. I'm going to say sew quilt. And it's asking me to select the first pattern that I want to stitch. I'm going to choose the first pattern to quilt. This one starts in the upper right, comes down to the left. Continue. Select the next pattern to quilt. 
I'm going to quilt the one that's closest. I'm going to travel in the ditch. I'm going to say continue, stop to cut threads. Now when I stop to cut threads, I can take control over stitching that short distance to get to the next start. That is my preferred method. I don't get a lot of backtracking. It's a nice clean finish and I'm controlling the fabric and stitching in a manner that I know that those stitches are going to be in the ditch. So started there, came down, traveled over, now I'm on start two, next pattern to quilt, this one. I want it to come down and start there, so I'm gonna swap the start and ends. You see a pattern developing here? I'm gonna end here, travel down, and that will be my next. Ends down below, what's my next one to choose? This one. You have to say continue, stop to cut threads. This is my next one, starts in the left, goes up to the right, continue, stop to cut threads. Next one, I need to change my start and my end. I'm taking control of the sequence here. Swap the start and the ends because I know when it ends up here, I can travel down and start that next diagonal. This works really well for me. So you can see how this is going to happen. I'm gonna continue sequencing this. I did leave one travel in there. I'm going to cut my threads as opposed to stitching around the exterior of the block. All right, so what's left to do now? I need to sequence the rest of the design. Now I have the whole block sequenced. So I'm going to say sew quilt. I'm going to say preview. Travels down. I'm gonna pause this. I'm gonna speed it up considerably. Notice the stitch regulation required pops up. That's because these two numbers are too far apart. So I'm gonna keep going up that. Start. So it moved diagonally from the right down to the left. Now let's cut the threads and touch start. Now, I would have manually stitched that myself. Up we go. It stops to let me take control. When it stops, I can tell if that stitch is in my ditch, if I exceeded the area that I wanted to, or if I stopped short. But any way that that happens, I am in control of it. It is allowing me the opportunity to unsew one stitch if it went too far. It's allowing me to take one stitch if it didn't close it up. But what I like most importantly is the fact that I can touch the back arrow and I can go to restart and I will be completely free to move about the quilt. So this gives me more control, it gives me more precision, and it gives me the beautiful diagonal lines made by IntelliQuilter. So let's touch start and see where it moves. It is moving right along that seam that I have. I'm gonna to touch start. It's stopping exactly on the stitch line that I have down below. If it were a real quilt, that would be in the ditch and I would be so happy. Because I sequenced the stitching and I changed the starts and the stops, it's traveling right along in the ditch. Isn't that neat? So now you know how I like to do my crosshatch. Start, let's see where it's gonna go next. It's gonna go up, there we are.
Okay, so we've watched this in preview, and I think you can understand my idea behind how I set up the cross hatching. So I'm going to touch the back arrow. I'm going to, remember this is in preview mode, so I need to go back again. Do you want to save the current needle position? Not for this preview mode, I don't. The sequencing is complete and it's time to sew the quilt. So I'm going to touch sew quilt. 